What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at input boxes and buttons for Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at input boxes and buttons. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so in the last video, we installed Kivi and we did a, you know, a couple of basic labels. In this video, I want to put input boxes and a button. Now this looks kind of crazy right now. We'll get into changing the design later. Right now I just want to talk about how to create these input boxes and buttons. If we click this, we can see, hey, it says something on the screen. Everything kind of changes size and, and things like that. It's kind of neat. You keep clicking it, <laughs> it keeps changing. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So I've got the starter code from the last video up on the screen. I've got a file called input.py. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. Okay, so let's come up here. And in this video, like I said, I want to create input boxes and buttons. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the grid layout options that you have. We're not going to get into it in great detail in this video. We'll talk about all the different options for layouts in future videos. Like I said, in this video, we just want to get started with input boxes and buttons, the most basic sort of input output thing in any sort of programming language. So we need to import a few things. Every time we do something in Kivi, we got to import something. It's kind of ridiculous, but we can come up here and go from Kivi dot UIX dot grid layout. We want to import grid layout. And you'll notice the capital G and the capital L. It's lowercase here, right? So we also want to from Kivi dot UIX dot text input, we want to import text input. And again, notice capital T and capital I, this is always the case, capital G, capital L, capital T, capital I. And then finally, we want to go from Kivi dot UIX dot button, we want to import button. And button is capitalized, there's only one word in it, so only one capitalization. So, okay, We've got these three things we've now imported. Now we can use them. So let's create another class to start building these things out. So let's code class, and I'm going to call this my grid layout. And this is going to inherit grid layout. And that comes from right here. Now, like I said, there are several different layouts that you can use. There's float layout, box layout, grid layout. I want to say stack layout. Uh, relative layout and anchor layout. We're going to talk about a bunch of those in the future. In this video, we're just going to use grid layout and grid layout kind of does what it sounds like. It creates a grid, right? So, okay. So now let's initialize infinite keywords that we can pass into this class, right? So let's go define underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And we want to pass in self and we also want to pass in those infinite keywords. And to do that, we use star star quarks. And this is a kind of a basic class sort of thing. If you're familiar with object oriented programming with Python, if not, you might want to brush up on your object oriented Python a little bit, but uh, to understand what we're doing in these things or otherwise just sort of follow along. So now let's call the uh, grid layout constructor. And don't worry about these terms I'm using. If you're not familiar with them, just kind of roll with it. It'll all become familiar as you start using these things more often. So we can call super. And then we want to call my grid layout and also self. And this is going to be dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And again, we're going to pass in those cores. Okay. So we're pretty much ready to go. Now we need to just start mapping out things. So first off, let's determine how many columns. So let's set the columns. So I want at least two columns. So uh, let's go self dot calls and set that equal to two. And we'll change this around and play with this and see what happens in a minute. But we can set our columns. So now we can just add widgets, right? So add the things that we want and sort of like Kinter, everything is a widget. And we have text widgets, we have uh, text input widgets, we have button widgets, we have label widgets, we have all the different things. So 
let's go self dot add underscore widget. And let's start out with a label. And we want the text to equal name, maybe something like that, right? Okay, now let's add input box. So first we want to define the thing and then we want to add the thing. So we can go self dot, I'm just going to call this name. And this is going to be a text input widget. And let's go multi line equals false. So this will create a box and it'll be just one line. If you want more than one line, you can set this to true and we'll see what that looks like in a second. So after we define it, define this, now let's add it. So we can go self dot add underscore widget. And we want to add self dot name, which is just this guy right here. Now you may be asking, how come we didn't do two steps for this label? Because we didn't really define the thing to start out with. We just put it right in here to begin with what the text is going to be. So we could get away with doing it just in one line here. I don't know. There's a little bit more going on here. So we'll just break this into two things. So, okay. So that, that looks good. Now we can just copy as many of these as we want. So if we want, for instance, two, we just add another one. And here instead of name, let's put favorite pizza. And I'm going to call this one pizza. And here we're going to add it, add pizza. And this name is important. We're going to reference this later on when we pull the information out of whatever you typed into the box, right? So, okay. Now, if we want another one, we can add another one, as many as you want. Doesn't really matter. Here, let's go, I don't know, favorite color, right? And here we go, color. And down here we go, color. Okay, so we've got all this stuff. Now we need to tell our app to sort of use it, right? So remember in the last video, we returned this label that said, hello world. We don't want to do that anymore. Now we want to just return my grid layout like that in our build function here, right? Which is just what we call this class. So we can go ahead and save this and let's head back over here. Make sure you're in your C Kiwi GUI directory. Make sure your virtual environment's turned on and we can go Python input.py and pop up, up, does all the things. And when that happens, we get this huge thing. Now, again, this is, giant in size, and we can look in the future about changing the design of this thing, which we will. But for now, we just want to get this up and functional. And you can see as we resize this, they dynamically resize, which is really nice, right? One of the nice things about Kivi. And if we make this bigger, if you hit enter, it just goes out of it because we, we set that to multi-line false. So you can only have one line, right? Okay, so we've got that. So now let's build a button. So let's come up to our my grid layout. And let's create a submit button. And this is going to be self and I'll just call this submit. And it's going to be a button. And we want the text to equal submit. And let's give this a font underscore size of like 32 to make it bigger so we can read it easier. And then we can go self dot add underscore widget, which is how we're always adding these things. And we want to call self dot submit, right? So we save this now, nothing will happen when we click this button, but the button should at least work. So let's run this guy again. And you can see there's a submit button. We can click it and it doesn't really do anything. Now you'll also notice that it just is in this column right here. It's not spanning the whole thing. I'll show you how to do that probably in the next video, how to span the whole column. It's a little complicated than what you would normally think. You're not going to use like a call span function. We have to actually change some stuff around and it's a little complicated and weird. But for now, I just want to make sure we get this button up and running. So, okay. And speaking of this thing, not going all the way across here, you'll notice that Kivi just kind of puts these things where it wants. We've told it two columns. So we've got column one and column two, and it's just sort of guessing where these things go. And that's how the grid layout thing work. It works. It just kind of guesses. If you want to be more specific on where the things are placed, then you can use different layout options that we'll talk about in the future. But the grid layout just kind of guesses and puts them in there. So if we changed the columns, so we head back over here really quickly and let's change this to like six columns. If we save this and ran it, 
Kibbe's just gonna guess how we want these and it's gonna look like this. So label, input box, label, input box, label, input box. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the submit button is down here. That's kind of weird, right? We can come back here and change this to, I don't know, three, run this again. And we get this weird looking thing. So it's just kind of guessing and putting them in the columns. We could change it to one. That's kind of a nicer looking maybe. Right, so I don't know. It all kind of lines up. Looks kind of mobile-y, right? <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, that's that's the grid layout. And we'll talk more about this in the future. But for now, I'm gonna set this back to two so it looks a little bit more normal. Okay, so now we've got this button down here, but it doesn't actually do anything. So in order to make it do something, we have to uh, bind the button. And to do that, we go self.submit.bind. And then on underscore press, we wanna set this equal to, what do we want to happen when we press the button? Well, we wanna run a function. And in the function, we'll do whatever we wanna do. But to designate that function, we would call self.press, right? So this is gonna be the function we're gonna create, the press function, right? Because we're pressing the button. Call it anything you want, it really doesn't matter. Just you call it Bob if you want, <laughs> and that works. So now, outside of this init function, we can create our press function. So right here, so let's go define press. And inside of here, we wanna pass self, and we also wanna pass instance. Because when we're binding things, we're passing an instance of something. If you're familiar with Kinter event bindings, we always pass a, an event in. Sort of like the same thing, we're passing an instance of this whole thing in here. And then now what do we wanna do with it? Well, we can create variables of our input boxes and then do something with them. So I'm gonna call this one name, I'm gonna call the other one pizza, and the last one we'll call color. And then for here, we can go self.name.text. And I'm just gonna copy this and paste it here. And then this will be self.pizza.text, and this will be self.color.text. Where am I getting this? Well, the dot text is the text input. And we named this one pizza, so we're calling pizza's text, whatever we entered in the text box, right? So then we can come down here and we can do anything we want with this. Uh, we could print it out to the print it out to the terminal if we wanted to, right? So let's create a little F string here, and let's say uh, hello name you like pizza pizza and your favorite color is color exclamation point right okay so that looks good let's go ahead and save this and run it see if that worked so I'm gonna say John, favorite color, or my favorite pizza is, let's say pepperoni, back when I used to eat meat. Favorite color is, let's say blue. Now if we click submit, nothing happens, but if we close this down here in the terminal, it says, hello John, you like pepperoni pizza and your favorite co color is blue. So we've grabbed the stuff from the form that we filled out and we did something with it. So very, very cool and pretty easy. Now we could, we don't have to put it on the terminal like that, obviously. We could, let's say, uh, print it to the screen, right? So let's go self, and let's, let's walk this through again. So how do we add text to our app? Well, we did it up here, right? So it's just add widget. In fact, I can just copy this whole thing. And the text is gonna be whatever we put here. Now, maybe we want to put all of this stuff as the text, so we could do that. Notice I use single quotes, you could do single or double, doesn't matter at all, and that should work. So let's go ahead and save this and run this guy again. So John, let's say cheese, and let's say black, changing our answers around. And you can see it's trying to fit it into this column. It doesn't really have enough room. So if we resize this, it fits. Hello, John, you like cheese pizza and your favorite color is black. 
And that's pretty cool. So again, we're gonna get into this layout in the future, moving this stuff around because this didn't quite fit. In this video, I just wanna show you how to use the basic functionality of these things, how to create a text input box, how to enter stuff into it, how to click a button, how to grab the information out of there and do something with it. We don't really care what we're doing with it, but we're doing something. Now, notice after I hit this button, <laughs> this stuff still is in here. How do we get rid of that stuff? Well, that's really easy. We can do that real quick. We just come down here and in this same function, after we press the button, let's say, clear the input boxes. We can just call self.name.text and set that equal to nothing, right? So we've got three of them. So self.pizza.text and self.color.text. We can just set them all to nothing. So save this. Let's run this one more time. And we can just enter anything in here. And then boom, they disappear. Very cool. One more thing I'll show you. We set this text up here for the name. Uh, let's say, yeah, for the name one, multi-line to false. If we set this to true, we could run this again and just see what this does. So here we can do this. We can hit enter and we can just continue on down. That's what multi-line does, right? That becomes a hassle when you actually do stuff with it later on. But that's cool. So that's how you do input boxes and buttons. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you're not familiar with uh, object-oriented programming classes and things like this, this may look a little weird. Uh, you know, just sort of maybe familiarize yourself a little bit more with object-oriented programming class stuff with Python, or just kind of roll with this. This will become more familiar as we do it more often. You'll get used to this uh, sort of thing with using self in front of everything, right? And uh, stuff like that. It's really not that tough. Uh, try not to wrap your brains around it too hard. If it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, just kind of roll with it. I promise it'll make sense more as we start to use it. And it's actually really easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.